Internet users from all over the world were captivated by this terrifying story. As they tried to unravel the mystery of what had happened, no one could have been prepared for the cultish horrors that they would find while it unfolded. <laughs> It all began in late 2010. A 4chan user by the name of Jerusable would post about a mysterious N64 cartridge that he purchased at a garage sale. As Jerusable delved deeper into the game, strange and inexplicable bugs began to surround his experience. At first, these glitches seemed random and without purpose, but as he dug deeper, he couldn't shake the feeling that they were not mere glitches at all. It was as if something, or someone, was trying to use the game to communicate with him. Jerusable was consumed by the mystery, spending countless hours playing the game and documenting every unsettling occurrence. But the more he played, the more eerie the game became. Despite his mounting fear, he was determined to uncover the truth and shared all of his findings on 4chan, inviting the internet to follow along on his journey. In this video, we will discuss Jerusable's story and experiences with the Cursed Majora's Mask cartridge, a tale of mystery, obsession, and the unknown. Will Jerusable be able to solve the mystery and uncover the secrets hidden deep within the game? Or will it psychologically and physically consume him? Strap in, because you're in for a wild story. The content that you are about to witness was all taken from the Jerusable archives, which was created by users that were engulfed in his story back in September of 2010. As Deducible sat at his desk, staring at the glowing screen of his computer, he took a closer look at the cartridge. On the back of it, someone wrote Majora in all caps. Strange. He popped the game in the console, and when the title screen appeared, he made his decision to create a new save file, just as he had done countless times before. He named it Link, a nod to his childhood memories of playing the game. There was one other save file on the main menu, named Ben, which was likely left there from the last owner of the game. At first, everything seemed normal. The game ran smoothly, and the graphics were as he remembered. But, as Judasable delved deeper into the game, he began to notice strange anomalies and glitches. The music became distorted, and sometimes the characters spoke in twisted, gargled voices. As the hours ticked by, Judasable couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. One of the various glitches caused NPCs to mix up his character's name Link with the other save file called Ben. It was a minor annoyance, but Judusable decided to delete the Ben file to stop the confusion. Things only got stranger from there. The once bustling area of Clock Town was now a ghost town, empty of all NPCs that inhabited it. This is when Judusable began recording his experiences, knowing that events like these were rare in games. The only other presence in this unsettling world was the elegy statue, which seemed to stalk him at every turn. No matter how hard he tried, the game kept him trapped, forcing him to run aimlessly in search of a way out. <laughs> J 
Jujusable encountered something that should have been impossible. His character burst into flames. This had never happened before and should have been inconceivable. Despite his best efforts, he failed twice, and was met with a prolonged scene of the boss hovering over his dead character's body. After these harrowing events, Judusable found himself back on the main menu screen with a new save file saying, your turn. He hit the reset button, hoping to erase everything that had just happened. To his shock, the old Ben file that he had erased seemed to have come back to the exact spot where he had deleted it. Unable to take any more, Judusable logged out of the game to share his experience with the internet. His post caught the attention of many other anonymous users, and a small cult following began to form around the mysterious game. These users were deeply interested in Judusable's findings and eagerly awaited for his next update. I'm going to post what happened and link the video footage. But last night, everything got too real for me. I think I'm done messing around with this. I passed out pretty much immediately after making that thread. But last night, that Elegy of Ebeniness statue, I had a dream about it. I dreamed that it was following me in my dream, and I would be minding my own business when I'd feel my neck hair stand up on end. I would turn around, that thing, that horrible lifeless statue, would be staring with those empty eyes right at me, merely inches away. In my dream, I remember calling it Ben, and never before had I had a dream that I could remember so vividly. But the important thing is, I did get some sleep, I suppose. Judusable visited the old man who had sold him the cartridge at a garage sale, hoping to get answers about the strange behavior of the game. However, the old man was not there, Instead, Judusable spoke with a neighbor, who told him that the old man had moved away shortly after the garage sale. After a bit of prying, the neighbor mentioned an accident had occurred involving someone named Ben in the past, but seemed to be reluctant to discuss it further. The old man and Ben had to be linked somehow, and this Ben had to be the key to what was going on here. Who was Ben? <laughs> Later that night, Judusable returned to the game and selected the Ben file. Needless to say, the game continued to glitch. Judusable would soon find himself in the land of Termina.
After a bit of walking, he encountered the Happy Mask salesman, Skull Kid, and the LG statue. He approached them and played the song of healing on his ocarina, specifically for the Happy Mask Salesman, since that was his song and it was playing in reverse on repeat for much of the adventure. The press start screen was before me. I knew the only reason why it put me here is because the save files had changed again. Taking a deep breath, I pressed start. And I was right. The new save files told me about Ben. Now it made sense why the statue appeared when I tried to go to the laundry pool. The game must have anticipated how I have tried to escape day 4 clock town. The two save files told me his fate. As I suspected, Ben was dead. He had drowned.
Jerusalem <laughs> became overwhelmed by the strange events in the game and decided to leave school and return home for the time being. He informed his roommate of the situation and asked him to post an update in 4chan using his account Judusable so people would know that it's not a fake. The roommate agreed and posted an update on Judusable's account. He told me that he's getting away from here, that it lured him to play it again instead of trying to change things, and he shouldn't have done that, and to upload the footage and inform people what had happened. I told him that he could do it himself, and he got this wild look in his eye and told me that he's never looking at that game again. And that's the last thing he said to me. He never even said bye when his parents came to pick him up. I was hoping I'd at least get a chance to meet his parents when they picked him up, but they were in and out so quick I never saw them. From the flash slide Judusable gave him, he was able to put up a new video on YouTube showing some of the last footage recorded of the game, which was named Judusable.wmv.
Later, Judusable's roommate would post on 4chan at 11.04 p.m. and stated, Honesty is the best policy, which contained a download to the truth.txt. In the document, it revealed the decline of his mental health during his time playing the game. One notable event described in the notes was the strange behavior of Judusable's computer a few days after he purchased the game. One night, a document on his computer opened on its own and displayed the message hi, along with a link to cleverbot.com. When Judusable followed the link, he had a strange conversation with the bot. As Judusable's mind descended further into madness, he explained in the document that he felt like a prisoner in his own home, being tormented by the game. He had no idea what was happening or what the game's intentions were, and the uncertainty of all of it left him questioning his own sanity. The situation seemed hopeless, and he was consumed by fear and confusion. Whenever he would search on the internet, he would occasionally see an image of the elegy statue randomly show up. The game took over Judusable's thoughts, and he felt trapped, as if there was no escape. Judusable became even more terrified when he noticed that the summaries of his posts on various forms had been tampered with, or censored. There was no mention of the strange happenings outside the game, or the moon children that he encountered in the game. How could this happen? And why would Ben do this? Maybe this thing isn't Ben after all. Maybe it's the thing that killed him. <laughs> Towards the end of the document, Judusable adds a few last thoughts. Apparently, he never had a roommate. Somehow Ben had hijacked his computer and posted without his knowledge. Again, the footage is censored, not showing the full extent of what happened. Judusable reached his breaking point and knew that drastic measures were necessary to put an end to this nightmare. He made the official decision to discontinue his posts on 4chan destroy his infected laptop, and eliminate the source of the haunting, the game cartridge. This was his last resort to free himself from the curse that had consumed him and to regain control of his mind. He then released one final video, labeled free.wmv. It would change his YouTube name to Now I Am Everywhere. Two days would pass after Deducible bid farewell and claimed to be free from the control of Ben. However, many users following the story were filled with dread as they feared that Ben was now infiltrating their computers through the truth.txt file that Deducible had distributed. The ongoing theory was that Deducible didn't release the file, it was Ben. If this was true, the file could serve as a gateway for Ben to gain control of unsuspecting individuals' computers, infecting thousands of devices. Ben was now thought to be free, unleashed on the web to wreak havoc. If you visit Judusable's channel, you'll find all the videos he uploaded throughout his journey. However, there are two initial videos that appear to be unrelated to the rest, and both were posted way before Judusable's initial posts. There is a video of random gameplay from the video game Prototype. After looking at the footage, it seems to be completely unrelated, although the other video posted is creepily significant. In its description, Judusable states that after you talk to her, you become drowned in dialogue, given by an NPC named Rosa. You chased it for the one at the top of the city, on the sea, from underground. 
in the crypt. It's open. Oh, it's open. Oh God. Oh God. Run. Don't open it. Whether or not you win the game matters not. It's if you bought it. In a way, users saw Rosa as a prophet of what had happened to Dejusable. Interestingly enough, this video was posted about a year and a half before Judusable would purchase the game cartridge. This is either an extremely strange coincidence, or it could mean something more. A few days would pass without much of anything. Then out of nowhere, a cipher on Judusable's videos would lead users to a URL. Interesting. Entering the phrase, you shouldn't have done that, dot net, into Google will lead us to a strange website about something called the Moon Children. The Moon Children was a piece of the puzzle that Ben seemed to censor. For some reason, Ben didn't want anyone to know about the Moon Children, or did he? The website has an about page, which speaks about their organization. This is a website for those who have formed a spiritual connection with the Moon and him, and recognize that we have selected to perform miracles and bring enlightenment into this world. She has chosen us, and only us, to survive the upcoming apocalypse, because we have honored her and devoted ourselves to her. As we work to enforce her will, we grow together as a family and serve the greater good. We are the moon's children. If you have found your way here, it is not by chance. You are at home here. You belong with us. And while you may be caught off guard, I think right now, you can feel something inside you agreeing with me. Listen to your soul. Get in touch with yourself. Your soul knows this, and we can show you how. So let's backtrack. The Moon Children are a group of people that have formed some spiritual connection with the Moon. They believe that they are special and will survive this upcoming apocalypse because they have devoted themselves to her. The homepage showcases the website's mods, Ifrit, Neko, Duskworld, and Drowned. This page seems to be some type of update board where the mods are quickly able to get information right to the users with ease. The first post on the board contains Ifrit, welcoming the members to the new site. The next post is by the mod Neko, and this is where things begin to get strange. Towards the end of their post, Neko speaks about how they won't be a mod much longer because of their upcoming ascension, that is the following day. This raises the question, what exactly is ascension? The following post is by Duskworld23. He firstly congratulates Neko on his ascension, and then talks about the website and how it will no doubt attract more potential children. He makes a point at the end of his post to not upset Mr. D. It's highly likely that Mr. D is the next mod that posted on the board, also known as Drowned. All he says is, you shouldn't be reading this. This sounds awfully like someone or something that we know from Deducible's cartridge. Let's take a closer look. Looks like we found Ben. Neko makes one last post before their ascension. They talk about how they were meant to do this, and it's their destiny to do so. Towards the end of the post, they end off saying, Keep this site running strong when I'm gone. I'll be back to come get you guys soon. Duskworld23 posts two hours later, saying that Neko's ascension was a success, and he hopes to see him soon. At the end of his post, he talks about a new spiritual presence, which is likely referring to Neko's ascension. Ascension is quite obviously death, and they believe at some point they will return. This is probably why Neko's bio was wiped from the about page. He has now ascended, and there would soon be another mod to take his place, who will at some point also ascend to their death. Moving over to the Creed section of the website, there are two songs that they supposedly sing at meetings, the Creed and the Initiation Creed. Oh Father, I pledge to you, O oh, mother, I give myself a hundred times. May the moon illuminate our path. We bear our souls to you. To that which will bring the end, empower us with your infinite grace. May we receive the greatest glory of all. May we ascend to the heavens themselves. We are the moon's children. We are immortal angels. The creed suggests that ascension doesn't just mean death. It means that they are being sacrificed to their moon god Luna. The Theories tab on the website offers a fascinating glimpse into various predictions of the end of the world, including the Mayan calendar prophecy, Hindu prophecy, and even NASA predictions. 
However, the most pertinent theory for the cult is the Luna prophecy. Dating back to 1998, a moon child named Kelbris received several whispers from Luna herself. The order was still young then, and Kelbris was the first member to have been talked to by her. Rather than ascending him, however, these whispers informed him of how the end will come about. The whispers were brief and vague, detailed below. They break free of the prison, engulf the world, man will be betrayed by its minions, and I will be brought down from the sky, consuming everything. It's worth noting that the number three is reported by Kelbris to have been said numerous times, sometimes in between words, sometimes even between letters, so it is assumed there is some kind of significance there. Kelbris was later found electrocuted, whether it was foul play or an ascension was never determined. Although transcendent, Kelbris' discovery made him a legendary figure within the Moon Children, and much of the order today is based off of that prophecy. After scrutinizing every inch of the website, users found various secrets hidden throughout its contents. Another hidden page was found by adding the word drowned to the end of a URL. It will bring you to this page with an interesting looking creature and the message, dead end, go back. If you look at the file name for the creature, you'll see that it is named Celebris, the same being that was said to have heard whispers from Luna herself. Looking at the webpage title of this page will give us another cipher. My eyes, they took my eyes. Users discovered a page bearing the enigmatic title FJ6RT, which seems to be another cipher. The page also contains a cryptic message stating, should you know the question to ask, the gate of truth will be opened. Hidden on the same page is a secret email address, which seems to belong to Ifrit. Users decide to try their luck and email Ifrit to see what else they could find. Luckily, users were able to save and archive these conversations for future reference. The discussions were extensive, but some key discoveries were made throughout the course of communication with Ifrit. Ifrit's real name was revealed to be Rodney R. on the About page, but was listed as Matt Hubris on the emails. The emails revealed several important details. Notably, it was confirmed that Ben, who had been reported missing, was a member of the cult. However, his body was never found and Ifrit referred to him as his brother and believed that Ben had ascended. The emails also mentioned that someone named Alex was missing since the blackout. When asked about the significance of the cartridge, in relation to the cult, Ifrit denied any connection. Additionally, when users asked about someone named Rosa, it was revealed that there was a Rosa who had previously reported as Ascended and was Ifrit's sister. A strange coincidence, she had the same name as the NPC from Judusable's first video. Ifrit's final email message was, hang on, someone is knocking at my door. Following this, users were unable to reach him again. Later that same day, Judusable's YouTube channel posted the lyrics to the song, Who's That Knocking? I wonder who would post that. After more looking around, users would find a strange YouTube video response to the final Ben Drowned upload. And to make things interesting, the video name matches the code found on Ifrit's page, FJ6RT. Along with this, the contact name on the YouTube channel was named Alex, the same person that supposedly went missing during the blackout. Shortly after this video was found, the Moon Children website would go down. A day later, the site would finally go back up. Ifrit and Drowned were now non-existent, simply erased from the website. Instead, a new mod took their place, named Insidie. One user, named Freydunabris, made a breakthrough on YouTube. They posted a video response to Deducible, playing in an inverted Song of Time.
Ben responded to the song with a ciphered and scrambled message on Jeducible's channel. This message translated to, You've begun to start thinking. You've begun to catch on. You've made a discovery today, but how long until that blessing becomes a curse? Users would quickly find out that playing a melody on the ocarina in game, then posting it as a video response would trigger real world events, and sometimes it would merit a response from Ben. A user named MF Greth recorded himself playing the new wave Bossa Nova, an ocarina song that grants others the ability to speak, which was intended to bring Ifrit back, but it seemed to have other effects. Shortly after this video was uploaded, Ifrit began responding to emails once again, but something seemed off. It turns out that Ifrit wasn't the one talking. Apparently, it was Rosa, the one who had, according to Ifrit, ascended already. She didn't give much information and was quickly thought to have succumbed to a similar fate as Ifrit, as during one of the chats, Ben would interfere with Rosa, even counting outside her door at one point. To try to rewind time and save Rosa, another user, Maya, would play the song of time and upload it as a reply to the video. Unfortunately, this wouldn't help. The initial Rosa video would now have the tags, you didn't save her, along with Rosa trapped. It appears that Rosa was doomed to remain in the game. Alex would then post a video on his account, the link missing. Yeah. Viewers saw this as Alex's death. Following this, there would be many video responses that were posted, all having various status effects on Alex. MF Grath would upload a video of a fairy attempting to save Alex. This would cause Alex to respond with a video saying continue, most likely expressing that MF Greth successfully revived him. However, this victory would be cut short when another viewer, Xerxy, would cause him to disappear indefinitely by playing the Sonata of Awakening. Ben would post another video shortly after this on Jeducible's account. The video would be taken down soon after it was uploaded. On September 20th, an individual named Alexander Hall came forward as the creator of this whole story. Due to a lack of funds, he decided to put a halt on the adventure and would continue part 3 at a later date. He had a Q&A on 4chan's X board and confirmed with everyone that this whole story was an ARG, also known as an alternate reality game. Overall, Alexander's work on this story is highly regarded as one of the best ARGs in internet history. It was so good, in fact, that most users didn't fully realize it was made up until Alex came out and announced his role as the creator. As of now, he has finished the entirety of Arc 3, which is the final arc known as Awakening. However, many fans of the story believe it was the most captivating when the inner workings were shrouded by mystery. The uncertainty of whether it was real or fabricated added to the intrigue and made it all the more exciting to follow.